Greetings, my name is Donita. I am today's host for Between Us Foods, our On One Studios podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get updates on when we release these videos and other videos as well. Um, and if you have other topics, ideas about what we want to talk about, please leave a comment. Don't forget to give us a like. And today's topic, we're going to talk about the beginner's guide to getting involved in the urban dance community. So between us foos, let's talk about it. Okay, so thank you guys for tuning in. Before we start, um, I do want to talk about something coming up real, real soon. It is On One Studios Open Floor Showcase. It Ooh. is on September 14th. September 14th. September 14th. Saturday, September 14th. Um, so mark your calendars. We have some very special performances. Um, we've got our own mentors showcasing their performance workshops. We got uh, Brandon Huynh, Chris Managa, Chris Nguyen, as well as our K-pop mentors are doing a collab um, with a couple of students. So check us out September 14th, Saturday, September 14th, open floor. Um, <laughs> so let's get to it. Today we have very, very special foos joining our discussion today. Um, this is our very, very first time we're having guests outside of our staff. So give them a warm welcome. We have... Hi, I'm Richard. Hi, I'm Ray. All right. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, Richard. Welcome, Ray. Do you have some nicknames? Just Richard. <laughs> Just Richard. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> and Ray. So Richard and Ray, how are you affiliated with the studio? So I teach Urban One, which is like a beginner's class. I teach it weekly. As of now, I teach it on Thursdays, 730 to 9. Yeah. Same, same. I'm also an Urban One <laughs> um, mentor, um, and I teach Urban Two as well. Awesome. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. We're very, very appreciative. Um, today's topic is going to be a beginner's guide to getting involved with the urban community. Claps, please. <laughs> All right. So where to start? Um, basically, yeah. Where should our students start if they are a beginner, brand new dancer mm -hmm. um, outside of a dance community? Where should they start? Where did you guys start? Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, before we get into like, yeah, the community, like how did you guys get into, I guess, dance and what was your beginner experience like, I guess? Whoever first. Um, my experience is, well, I, I came up in the, um, in like the Michael Jackson and Usher, I'm aging myself, uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of era. So what I would um, kind of like, when I look at it, is the equivalent of like our YouTube was the mm -hmm. MTV and all the music videos, um, TRL and seeing uh, you know In Sync and Backstreet Boys and all those people, um, and um, seeing how dance um, really brought a performance out. Um, it kind of I, I initially um, like break dancing. Um, my best friend now to this day actually moved in next door to me, mm -hmm. and um, their family um, they break dance a lot, and so I kind of got into it um, that way. And I kind of mixed that with watching, um, you know, the Michael Jackson Usher performances, and then I just kind of got that that bug for dance. Um, and then, so that was my start. I just kind of did it in my garage mm -hmm. with mirrors and rolled out linoleum, oh, and uh, <laughs> then I went to Home Depot <laughs> to purchase, like, <laughs> saved up all my money, um, and I started that way. Um, I guess that was my own little mini community, and then um, did talent shows. Um, whatever I could get into, and then um, local dance studios um, in my area, and uh, yeah. Yeah, for me, it was more about, so I grew up when YouTube kind of started and became a thing. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to learn like tricks and stuff. I didn't really think of it as dance when I first started like watching YouTube videos. I wanted to learn how to like move my head like this or do a wave <laughs> because I really want to like impress my friends, you know? <laughs> um, but I think as, as time went on, I saw like dance on TV, on movies, you know? Um, so you think you can dance, you know, mm -hmm. step up. But I think for me, it was really when AVDC came on that I watched it and I was like, oh man, I want to be like these guys, you mm -hmm. know? So when I went to college, uh, that's when I kind of started, I would take workshops that would be around school and then I joined a mega crew team and that's that. 
And Kevin and I kind of already talked about where we started. Yeah. Well, if, as as board members, but. Oh, that's true. I guess our dance journey is a little different. Um, yeah, we talked about it a little bit in episode one, <laughs> um, but I guess I started. Um, it was like just high school, like battle of the class type stuff. I was just honestly doing it just because. I don't know, everyone else is doing it and it was fun. I saw my older sibling, um, or my sister, older sister, sibling, um, <laughs> my older sister like dance. Um, and she danced with um, kind of, um, I guess one of the first dancers in the San Jose area and stuff. She was like really good friends with him. And so he was on Gen 2, I think at the time. And then, so I saw like all of that and it just really inspired me. I would just sit in the garage and watch them practice like all the mm. time and I was like, but why am I here? You know what I mean? I'm like, mm. what right. is so interesting about this to me? And so when I hit high school and I started doing these like battle of class type stuff, um, that's what just got, really got me into dance. What was crazy though was like, no one was choreographing anything. So we showed up to practice and like, there was no dance made. You're and I was like, like what just the like hell is going on? Yeah, so yeah. I was like, okay. Um, I, so at one point I was like, God, okay, fine, I'll do it. And so like, <laughs> that's pretty much what happened with dance. And then, I mean, yeah, the rest is kind of history from there. <laughs> right. For me, I think, I mean, I think dance was prevalent in my life since I was younger, but I joined the community when I had a desire to compete or mm. be in a team, I think. So that was also the same time as YouTube, um, you know, Gen 2 was on YouTube a lot, um, and other teams as well. And at the time, I would take workshops because my friends wanted to go, and I was like, okay, I want to try. And then I found out this workshop was hosted by this team, and I'm like, oh, okay, dance teams, you know, like how do you get into that type of stuff? So really, that was my... I started with jo wanting to join a team before wanting to like take classes and workshops. I would say it wasn't as accessible before, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> Definitely. I think really um, the main reason why I started was to get girls. <laughs> oh yeah. Now that I think Classic about story. it, now that I think about I it, mean, like, <laughs> we laugh about it. But honestly, I feel like a lot of people say that same thing, <laughs> and then it's more of when they keep doing it, then they realize it's something. Right. Much bigger. It was. Yeah. It's yeah. something about like. Uh, making connections, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 making yeah. connections. Yeah. yeah, if that's what you call it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what do, you, what do you guys recommend for new dancers? Where should they start? A beginner? Uh, well, I don't think there's any sort of like blanket statement you can say to there's everyone. No, like blueprint, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think the main obstacle in terms of someone wanting to dance but not dancing is kind of the fear of being judged or the fear mm. of looking, you know, quote unquote stupid. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the first step is really getting over that mental barrier. And there's many ways to kind of go about that, mm -hmm. you know, first either being taking class, taking a beginner mm -hmm. class, or even going out and just dancing on your own, doing mm -hmm. whatever you want, you know, but to get over that fear would be the first one. Right. Yeah, if you have the means, um, find a class. If you can't make it all the way out here, I, I mean, I was growing up in freaking Modesto. And um, no. I would drive two hours to Daly City to go train. Yeah. Like it's it's uh, you kind of want you kind of just have to um, if it's what you really want and you want to go and do it, just kind of make that commitment there and um, kind of that decision to okay, I'm gonna go and find a local dance studio, find somewhere else that can offer me a little more, whatever it is that you uh, want to do. Just make that step, um, make that choice, and and then just go find anything that you can to, to learn and help you learn and get moving. Progress you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I agree with you guys. I think there is a blueprint on starting how to how to start dancing. I think I would probably go the same road as like Richard and look, kind of ask yourself, what, why do I want to dance? What's my mm -hmm. goal? Uh, mm -hmm. Do I just want to perform? Do mm -hmm. I want to compete? Do I want to just recreationally move and exercise? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, finding out what your purpose is yeah. and wanting to dance and then then you can find how to do it where to look because mm -hmm. then there's so many things out there now that you can if you want to perform you know look for performance teams or if you want to do this you know research that as well yeah um, that kind of um, reminds me of um well the online studio staff actually just went on a retreat and we talked about something about finding your why and um 
there is kind of like almost like three layers where it's like it starts with the what on the outside and then the next layer in is the how and then the core at the core of it is the why mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so it, it was a really interesting thing because honestly like i know like, draw that on the <laughs> screen please um, but like pretty much um yeah like we we kind of discussed it and it was more so in the sense of like the studio as a whole like the, the why we're involved in the studio and stuff but i think it very much applies to anything that you do in life right and so you know, the why in dance for me personally has always changed over the years, right? And so, um, but I think that's what really drives people. Um, and finding that reasoning makes everything else fall into place, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I think. So. Right. What are some other things you guys do to, or did to get over that fear? Like, cause I definitely had that fear too. Like, I don't want to go to this workshop cause I'm scared. I don't know anyone uh, here. Yeah. I never went by myself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think in general, to conquer the fear of anything, whether it be dance or outside of dance, you just got to do it. You just have to put yourself out there and eventually you'll realize that whatever your fear is rooted from is not true and you shouldn't be afraid, right? So for dance, the fear I feel like is probably judgment, fear of judgment from others. Mm -hmm. If you go and take class enough, you realize that there is no judgment and that's how you get over your fear, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just face them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I would say, I think I, I still have fear to this day sometimes. I don't think it necessarily ever completely goes away. Um, it, it's just a matter of, like with anything, repetition. Um, initially, I mean, I could, I used to say all, all the time that just do it, just do it, like you have to just do it, but until I actually kind of get myself in those areas and surrounding areas and get something to push me, then um, I might that fear might overcome me when I'm um, saying, Talk, trying to talk myself into just doing something. So I think um, little by little, the more mm -hmm. that you do it, it'll, it breaks down a little more. That fear kind of goes away a little baby more steps. each and every time, yeah. Right. So for me, it's always been baby steps and there is fear now, but I always try to think back to a time where I was a little more afraid or I, or I, you know, I did something that I didn't necessarily want to and then I saw that, okay, I was fine. Nothing really yeah. happened, you know. I actually grew, I actually learned a lot more. So um, just, yeah, that, whatever that is. True. You could apply that with life. Okay, that's <laughs> the beginner's guide to life. life. Let me change the title. Life lessons. What? what? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I know, like, when I first started taking workshops and stuff, I felt like, um, I guess the landscape of dance was just a little bit different, though, back then, um, where maybe there was a little bit more judgment, or maybe that was just in my head, right? Um, but yeah. like, um, overall, like, I think it was really trying to find the place that really made me feel at home and made me yeah. feel comfortable yeah. and stuff because I mean not every location and every place that you take dance is mm -hmm. going to be the same yeah. right um uh, taking a class even up here in NorCal is very different from taking a class in LA yeah. right and yeah. so it really is about finding your home right finding what mm -hmm. makes you comfortable and mm -hmm. um I feel Did like grow? yeah mm -hmm. it's not a one size fit all type of thing mm -hmm. definitely every studio offers something completely different so maybe just experimenting with that too just Trying finding different things mm -hmm. yeah and yep. it, it just takes uh grit and like resilience yep buddy system grab a friend help you to help you push over the fear um and also i think with youtube and how mainstream everything is now we get a big um, we get a big sense of what is going on in Southern California, in other parts of the world and, uh, and, and around here so that we can get an idea of what it's like to go to something that we may not have never gone to before, something that might be bigger than, you know, maybe our local studio or something mm -hmm. even here, you know? So, um, yeah, I think just with the dance community now, it is so positive. It is so positive. True. So I think it, it, like touching, kind of piggyback off of what you were saying, Kevin, it, it, it does feel a lot easier to go to class and, and, and be more open because um, we do have, a, I think, a more positive scene. Not that it was super negative before, but I think now it is a lot more positive and it's a lot more welcoming and, and it's, a lot, it's a lot bigger, yeah. It's a lot, yeah. 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 I really like what you said about the buddy system because yeah. it's super yeah. true. Like, it's a lot less scary when you have someone going mm -hmm. through the same thing yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. And you make connections, build community. <laughs> exactly. And I know you're both scared together. Yeah. <laughs> Struggle together. It's Struggle true. together. I mean, yeah. we were talking about this earlier. We, um, the board had a meeting and we were like, yeah, we're noticing people starting to become friends just yeah. basically through oh, our Urban yeah. One classes. Yeah. True right. That. So it's a it's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've seen it in your urban one, your urban one classes, right? Which sold yeah, out last week. For sure. Mm -hmm. uh, people come and they're complete stranger. 
years and then I'm seeing them literally <laughs> weeks and months later yeah. and they're best friends. It's, yeah. it's really That's cool. cool. It's because they yeah. bond over like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> what is Richard talking about? <laughs> Why is Ray so weird? <laughs> like, yeah, hey, they're your friends. <laughs> that is true. I mean, okay, like my closest friends I met through dance, you know, yeah. and it's mm-hmm. kind of just shows it dep- everyone's journey is different. So, mm-hmm. but, you know, you're not alone. Yeah. You, we have to remember that too. Uh, but these are great tips on how to start, where to start. Um, well, let's talk about other tips and tricks for beginners in general um, that you guys may think of. Um, for example, as a teacher, or maybe you, you yourself, when you started out, when you were a beginner, what's something you would tell yourself? You know, now mm-hmm. that you're a little bit more mature and you have experience, what would you tell your past self? Here's a tip. <laughs> tip number one. Yeah. I think it's to realize that progress does not happen overnight. Um, mm. I think if you pressure yourself to say, like, I have to be good now, then mm. you're not going to have patience with yourself. You're going to be really hard on yourself. And I feel like that's counterproductive. You're going to be probably not growing as much as you would in a more positive environment. And I think a lot of it, too, is also just confidence in the sense that you have to come into class thinking, okay, I'm going to get the choreography today. Even if you don't get it, you have to tell yourself that you will. Mm -hmm. You have to reach for that A, and you might get the B or the C. But if you reach for the B, you're probably going to get an F. Like one of those things. (laughs) Wow. That is is my experience. (laughs) Maybe even a Z. I know. Yeah, Yeah, so okay, patience. I like that. Tip number one, be patient with yourself. Yeah, I mean, kind of piggybacking off of that, like, um, I teach, like, I guess cotillions and stuff, right? Like, which is like 18th birthday. (laughs) 18th birthday for those who don't know. Um, 18th birthday for, um, it's not always Filipinos, but mainly Filipinos for us here in NorCal. Um, And a lot of times uh, I use the metaphor of like getting abs, if that makes sense. Like, (laughs) like you're not going to get it right away if, like if you do a hundred sit-ups right now. So you make them do a thousand. (laughs) (laughs) And then it's like, they're like, oh, I'll make it up later and stuff. I'll I'll come to practices later. But I'm like, you're not going to get the same results if you do a thousand only on one day. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. It's a process that you have to go through. That's a good idea. I like that. So that's that's what I always tell them. (laughs) You have to gradually build, right? Consistency too. Mm -hmm. That's that's a huge one. That gradual build and that consistency doesn't end. I think that's a past tip I would give myself is that there is no end point in dance. True. Uh, whether you're just starting or whether you've been doing it for years or you're a professional or you're assigned to an agency, whatever it is, there's no end point in dance. You have to always continue to train. You have to yeah. always continue to learn and stay on top of your game. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Tip number one, be patient with yourself. Yeah. What are other tips um, for a beginner that's just starting right. out? Right. I think one for me is um, that dance is much more of a mental game than it is a physical. And I think that's mm-hmm. what a lot of people that go into dance don't quite realize um, that it really is like almost 90% what goes on in your brain <laughs> a little bit and 10% it, percent, it, it, it eventually so manifests physically um, I tell my team that a lot um, but pretty much yeah it's 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 something that people take lightly and stuff and like there's a whole lot of things that goes on in here that like can um, hold you back or like doubt yourself and stuff but I think once you get over those and just know that you have to work on getting over those then physically you'll start to have more confidence and more um, I guess open to vulnerability and things like that so yeah. that's what I would think I like that mm-hmm. I like that a lot I think another thing is not thinking of dance as just inside a studio mm-hmm. but kind of thinking of dance as I don't want to say lifestyle, but something that can be applied to your life, you know, um, whether it be you're listening to music and you're just like, yeah, you know, um, if you're probably not trying to dance if you're just standing there like this, <laughs> right? But a lot of it is just when you hear music, just like moving to it or having fun with it. Yeah, it's out outside of the studio, too. There's yeah. dance. Yeah. I mean, that's a third tip in itself. Have fun, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At the end Please. of the day, di- like, it's about how it makes you feel. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of have to ask yourself, like, do you like this still? Or, mm-hmm. you know, like, do something that makes you fun, something you enjoy. And again, it's all about taking baby steps. Mm-hmm. So maybe not putting yourself in the deep end right away, but like something yeah. gradually there. Mm-hmm. Being honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Being honest with yourself. Um, these are great tips. Is there a trick? <laughs> I know. A trick. Backflip. 
back with. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe like just remembering that everyone in class is focused on themselves primarily, yeah. right? right? Like, yeah. um, so just don't ever let anyone intimidate you. Um, overall, even if like I know a lot of um, advanced dancers take urban one classes because yeah. honestly, there's no like they love to just kind of remember their foundations and just practice those. So it's like if you see someone really killing it in class, it's like they're on a different journey than you, right? Exactly. So yeah. just That's a good focus one. on you, man. Mm -hmm. Everyone's different. <laughs> it's not about groups. Yeah, it's, it's not, not it's about, about select groups. <laughs> it's not about select groups. It yeah. should not be your end goal. Ask yeah. yourself why. Go back to that core. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself why if that's your if that's your goal. For a while though, for me, it was I need to get into select groups. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be honest. I I'll be honest. Everyone go goes through that, and I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I think everyone goes through that, and that's being honest with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You do. It, it's cool. Like you, you feel like you want to be good enough to be pointed out, or you know, to to show like the hard work that you've been doing. But maybe. at the end of the day, yeah. I agree with you. I think maybe to a certain point, it's just like a checkpoint. Like yeah. you mm -hmm. want to kind of yeah. have a progress point and mm -hmm. it's not always malintended. Like mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. you just want to see if yeah. your work is being, is Recognized. working. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's com that's completely understandable. Yeah, I think if you're trying to aim for select groups and stuff, there's nothing wrong with trying to have a goal in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you don't reach that goal, then don't let it consume you. Because right. at the end of the day, it's really based off of one or two people's judgment. Yeah. Right. That's there's true. plenty of yeah. other people in the world that have different opinions, right? So yeah, you can shoot for that goal, but don't let it get you down if you don't yeah. get it. You know? Super dope. Yeah. True. How about some practical tips? I would say um, learn how to stretch. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a big flexibility. One. Yes, I know. Um, Start of young. Course, yeah, <laughs> like I when think you stretch. <laughs> taking care of your body is a. I think start early. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, so yeah, th those stretches flicking. matter. Those yeah. warm ups matter. Mm -hmm. And so, if you are a beginner and you know you're a little bit taking it. Um, not too seriously, mm -hmm. I would say do, because <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. there's a reason why we do warm ups and stretches, <laughs> and definitely knowing how to stretch, I think that's important too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I agree with that definitely. Um, I wish my back knew that like <laughs> ten years ago, but um, it knows it now. It knows it now for sure. It like wrote a autobiography about it, but um, but basically I think another tip for me, what a trick more so, is thinking of dance as almost like um, Lego pieces, if that makes sense. Um, once you know how to do like a pas de beret or a pirouette, whatever, um, you just link those different move sequences together and then boom, you get to learn, a, like you don't have to, I guess, work towards even knowing how to do that in particular. Because yeah, there are some times where maybe we have to break down what, how to do a pas de beret, but once you know how to do it, you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so when a choreographer does it, like you just do it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think that's like a helpful tip for me um, when I tell like newer dancers is just to like, um, learn the basics, learn the foundations. There's nothing wrong with doing that before even going straight into choreography, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a couple, but the one that comes to mind, I always try to say simplify your thinking. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, let's say a series of moves is like left foot, right foot, right <laughs> hand, left hand. Like, if you're thinking that the whole time, you're gonna mess up, because that's too much to think about. But let's say the move, all that goes towards the right, and then you wanna travel to the left. It's so much easier to think, okay, I need to go to the right, and then I need to go to the left, and let whatever happen, happen, right? Mm -hmm. So you gotta find those ways to Simplify your thinking while you're doing the choreography, so you're not mm -hmm. too worried about it. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. True. I would say music <laughs> is a big thing too. Like, um, you know, listening to music that's a great foundation. Um, rhythm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, even I think, like, what I hear all the time, and even for myself, is when I start dancing, I hear music differently. You know, now I have that. Now I can't unsee or unhear yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like I, I listen to music with a grain of salt because I'm just like listening in a dancer's perspective. And um, definitely, I think, you know, there's a lot of times where choreography. Um, sometimes we don't know what they're hitting, but that's that's part of the journey. You know, kind of yeah. learning how to listen to music is you learn along the way because it's no one's born with that ear you know mm -hmm. it's kind of like a learned thing so music definitely get into um how that works listening to music mm -hmm. some more mm -hmm. and how dancers use it <laughs> right yeah i always say open your ears 
in class. Not saying like, your ears are closed, you're not listening. <laughs> but like, um, I know a lot of times for my beginner classes, that it's a lot of information and yes. data that's being thrown at them. And um, sometimes a little more than they might be used to. So they're really, confo uh, they're c it's almost consuming them. They're really focused on the movement and what to hit. Maybe a count, if I give them counts, if they haven't heard counts quite like that or even counts at all. Um, so they're so focused on that that they forget to kind of listen to what is going on musically. Yeah. So I say, open your ears. Don't forget to open your ears. Yes, I'm focused on what I'm doing with my body, where I'm at, but I also have to focus on what I'm hearing. Yeah. And that'll kind of, you know, bring those two together and kind yeah. of piece mm -hmm. it, help piece it together. And then going yeah. off of that too, when the music plays, don't let the music overwhelm you too, because sometimes there's so much going on in the song that you're like, oh my God, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And what I always say is, you know, if a good teacher has their counts, mm -hmm. just follow the counts, follow the counts while yeah. applying it to mm -hmm. the music, right? So mm -hmm. finding that balance. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Got it. Definitely scary though. Um, I remember my first class Me too. ever workshop actually was what it was, <laughs> it was called. Audition yeah. too oh me. yeah. Um, the same one, yeah. There's just a Do lot of things going mine? on in your head, and I'm going back to your point where like there's so much thinking that you need to do. But at the end of the day, um, you're there to learn how to dance. You're there to dance, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So it's kind of like simplifying things and being compassionate about um, your own journey, mm -hmm. patient with yourself, and things like that. Um, you know, and. I wonder if more people have tips and guidelines because I want to hear from urban our, our urban one students. You know what's work for them, <laughs> or, yeah, or like, anyone else in the comments. Honestly, like if you guys had any tips and tricks that you guys know about that has helped you, definitely leave a comment about it. Yeah, let me know so <laughs> <laughs> I need to teachers. learn. Right, because <laughs> I think um, there's a special thing about sharing, you know, tips and trick tricks and about stuff like that builds. For me, that's why. I keep dancing because I have people that support me, you know, like it's not always a, a lonesome journey that yeah. we have to go through. So let's share some tips in our comments, um, maybe in our Instagram uh, once it's released, right? Mm -hmm. um, but let's move into our next topic. So this is this one definitely we're going to look at it in a more of a mentor's perspective, teacher perspective. Um, let's talk about class etiquette. How to How take class. Well, um, you know, let's open the discussion on, I know there's no rule book out there that says this is how you should take dance classes, but I think it's important to start that conversation now so that people that are new into our community um, can learn about those things because not yeah. everyone grew up with us or mm -hmm. grew up with the dance community, basically, you know? Mm -hmm. So, class etiquette. Where to begin? So assuming you're a, like, this is your first class ever, mm -hmm. like someone who's yeah. never walked into class, um, I think realize that you need space to dance. So don't yeah. crowd the people around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and just be respectful of other people's space. Mm -hmm. For example, if someone's running the combination and you decide to go get water, that's fine. But wait until people have stopped dancing before trying to filter yourself through mm. all those people. Mm -hmm. um, so just being respectful of other people's space. Yeah. Respectful. Of other people's space. Yeah. That's a big one, yeah. I think a big one too is also, um, I think the best person to ask a question to is the teacher itself. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people like, especially if they're uncomfortable, like maybe publicly publicly asking what their question is, um, they tend to ask the person next to them and stuff, um, which I mean, can, like if it's something super quick, like is it left or right, like mm -hmm. sure, um, go ahead and do that. But I think. Um, the teacher obviously knows best um, in terms of what's going on in that room at that time. So I think asking them first the question, and that way, because other people might have that question. Or, that same yeah, question. so like um, if you're confused about it, I'm sure other people are confused about it as well. So um, joining a dance class, I think um, kind of remembering that there is a community, right? It is a communal um, gathering um, mm -hmm. for people to like, learn the same thing. So m might as well help each other, right? So. Yeah, I think every instructor, mentor, teacher has had that moment where someone asked a question and it answered, the answer was for multiple people in that room. Mm -hmm. You know, multiple mm -hmm. people had that same question. Mm -hmm. um, so just asking those questions to the mentor, um, I think 
is important because there might be, I know some, there's times when um, I teach and I want it explained a certain way because they might be beginners and I might want to just kind of give them that kind of in, information in that certain way to help them through something if I've witnessed or noticed that they are doing something different. So if someone else tells them something and I'm not quite sure what they, what mm. they said, I kind of want to make sure that, ensure that they're growing correctly or they kind of heard it or got the information correctly. So if they happen to give them wrong, a little bit of wrong information, you know, I just want to make sure that I always am aware of, um, of someone's growth if I can, if I can mm -hmm. have it affected in any way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question, speaking of questions, um, one thing I would, would like to tell people is definitely pay attention <laughs> to yeah. what questions are being asked because there is multiple classes where I'm like, okay, this question has been asked literally three times. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? And that comes with respect too. I think overall, respect in a class etiquette um, even in life etiquette, right? Yeah. Um, but of course, you would want to listen um, to, again, what if you're, that same question you, you're you about to ask is being asked. Mm -hmm. So um, pay attention, listen mm -hmm. to other people's questions, and um, because it's like, I would want to say, you know, it might help you. you know, really kind of like stay open, <laughs> ready for information that you might need you didn't know about <laughs> if you're a beginner and you're just coming into class um just real quick if don't stand next to someone <laughs> like there's so many times where i've come in and there's two straight lines in my class <laughs> um, <laughs> you know kind of start to um, add a little bit of depth and don't be right next to someone because you know i don't want to poke richard in the eye when i dance <laughs> i might sometimes but yeah just keep yeah. an eye out for that Windows, right? Windows. Windows. Yeah, we, we forget what that is, and that's okay. That's why we're we're sharing this yeah. discussion, right? Yeah, it's part but, of the mentor's job too, I guess, technically, mm -hmm. to like teach what windows are, like, <laughs> right? Like, you know, if this is their first time, they don't particularly understand that concept, so, you know. Yeah. What are some other class etiquette things that you guys have been noticing? in your classes um i don't have a class here mm -hmm. or currently um but just something that i personally noticed is um that a class is not going to be catered to you individually um so um i think it's best i feel like sometimes people try to potentially cater the class to their needs um maybe taking over like oh um let's only do it one more time and do music like it's like oh, yeah. um <laughs> i just noticed it too and it's like um Ultimately, it does kind of only cater the class to that one person versus like the class as a whole. <laughs> um, so I think just remembering that um, you, flexibility in, in terms of how you learn um, needs to be something that you remember. Yeah, like mm -hmm. just be flexible. Mm -hmm. What about um, being late? How should you approach that hmm. to a class? I think in terms of being late, you know, things happen, traffic mm -hmm. happens, you mm -hmm. know, unplanned things happen. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you're late, just kind of be, res again, be respectful of mm -hmm. people around you. Walk in, don't make a big fuss. Mm -hmm. Just walk in and then pick up what you can, mm -hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. Um, as quietly as possible, right? Because you don't want to distract what's happening yeah. with the teachers. Because I've seen that happen, you know, like teacher gets totally distracted, lose where they are type of thing. <laughs> um, so, and that's okay. Yeah, you're right. It's okay to be late, but just how you approach it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But other things, you know, in um, workshops, let's say, what are some class etiquettes in workshops? Because uh, those are two hours long. Maybe yeah. it's a little different from a class. Yeah. Need some just time be think. aware. If it's uh, workshops and they're that long, just be aware of your space. Those things can get tight. That's true. You know, those things get really, really um, kind of crammed. And just being aware of personal space and then um, leaving enough for the people around you, but also yourself. Um, being aware of that. Um, also, um, ask if just I always ask the choreographer if I can record. Mm. That's mm. just a big thing for me. I always ask if I can record their pieces. Um, sometimes I don't want some of the stuff recorded necessarily mm. right now. I'm not that like um, gonna be that kind of you know on critical about it. But I know there are choreographers before that have been really really like thankful that I asked. Like thank you for asking. It's happened a couple times. So um, that might be something to throw out there. Mm -hmm. 
and mirror space. <laughs> Mirrors. Mirrors. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to stand right in front of someone. Um, it's just something you don't think about, though, sometimes. You're just like, oh, I, yeah. I see myself. But um, just being, I guess, spatially aware. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of goes hand in hand with the, standing the next to each other. The theme is awareness, right? Yeah. 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 This whole <laughs> etiquette. Just be aware. <laughs> Maybe we'll have that in big letters. Be aware. Um, there they are. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's definitely going to change with uh, the landscape of like dance classes and dance studios. We're going to find things that are um, new in the mm-hmm. way we approach teaching dance you know what i'm saying um for example like water breaks you know i always had i always felt like waiting <laughs> until i was given a water break but then nowadays it's more accepted to um to to go when you need it <laughs> dude i forget to tell them to <laughs> take a water yeah. break so i'm always like if you guys need to get water get water because i will we will go an hour and a half without drinking water because oh i for, i seriously forget and i don't ever really like yeah yeah class is just too fun <laughs> <laughs> i'm having too much fun to drink water i, I guess yeah. it does get hot in our medium-sized room though like yeah. honestly yeah. it gets yeah. pretty hot in there really yeah quick. i know this might be a little bit of a i don't want to say controversial but it's a little bit out there topic Ooh. but what about spill the tea girl what drama. about body odor body Ooh, odor Ooh. bo it's my oh. favorite <laughs> That was not what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, like, if people get grossed that's, out about this. That's Donita's way of telling me I stink. Honestly, though. Like, like, are you trying to talk to us right now? <laughs> like, no, no, no. It's, yeah. it's something that people just don't know. Well, I think the hard part is maybe people just don't know. It's an awareness. It is. Again, yeah. awareness. Awareness. Yeah, but I think, okay, how do you explain? <sighs> I mean, uh, is there really anything you can do about it? Then? I mean, you know, ultimately, just just generally use deodorant <laughs> right like i think in general it's it it's an experience a dance class yeah. is an experience and you don't yeah. want that tainted by anything yeah. right i think like, maybe so. it just takes like trial and error like maybe it's the first time and they didn't realize but then like yeah. oh i'm going to a class that you know i am moving physically so yeah maybe i should have wore deodorant next time you know that type mm. of thing which i understand but i think um poor people that are aware then mm. do it wear, <laughs> wear deodorant um Definitely, it's a respect thing. <laughs> I think what helps me is to wear a clean shirt. Like, don't wear a shirt mm-hmm. that so you- don't wear the other, just a clean shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, but like, in all seriousness, like, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you have, like, a favorite shirt and you have, you're taking, like, three classes in a row, but you've already, like, sweated the, yeah. the mm-hmm. living, I can't cuss, but you sweated <laughs> a lot in that shirt, don't wear it the next day, you know, or wash it before you wear it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that thing. Which is why it starts smelling. Like, (laughs) (laughs) all of us at this point have like a separate closet for our dance clothes. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely do your laundry, please. Yeah. Um, But it's tough because who can smell themselves, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I mean, is there any, is there a special way or like a proper way, less? hurtful way to tell someone <laughs> oh, you know that's a can of worms I would not want to open not even just dance yeah. by yeah. I don't know how to tell someone yeah I don't know either <laughs> but I think if it, I, for the sake of like other people yeah. maybe it's time to challenge ourselves to be respectful <laughs> in a way it's all about communication it's all about yeah. delivery it's all about like you know at the end of the day you're just caring for this person right mm-hmm. but in other people the rest of the people if you're like yo you stink <laughs> like yeah, that's a different story but yeah. <laughs> i think it's always a challenge because especially with running a dance studio um that's something you think about <laughs> mm-hmm. like how do we preserve this space Definitely. um this experience you know yeah what else well other class etiquette stuff talking you know i mean it, it, it is a given for like most of us but people still talk mm-hmm. i've taken a class an urban one class where people are just chatting you know and i'm like um hello (laughs) um another semi-controversial thing please don't come under the influence of anything um that that has happened weirdly um in other scenarios that i've seen so it's like you know i think that's just kind of a general life like etiquette thing (laughs) to just kind of be your true full normal normal sober self that happened to you nah yes <laughs> what, what did you how'd you approach it that's never happened to me um yeah, so it's interesting because i had to treat it as if um 
it wasn't that case. Was if it that really makes bad? Sense. Like enough um, for you to really notice and not to affect particularly, other but I just I knew, yeah. you know, and I was like, hmm. Like I think it it just creates an awkward situation yeah. for yourself yeah. and the teacher and, and the rest of and the students. others. Yeah, yeah. So please don't come under the influence of anything. Um, we can't accuse anyone of any doing anything. So it's just kind of this whole like just avoid the situation entirely, please. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Would it's help a lot. thing, you know. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, again, the overall theme is awareness. And respect. Mm-hmm. Respect and awareness. <laughs> I know, I'm doing, like, like <laughs> imagination. <laughs> awareness. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, I mean, if you guys don't have any more ideas about class etiquette and how we can preserve that experience, maybe, um, again, we're taking this platform um, mm-hmm. to the best of its potential. So, you know, say, say what you need. Um, but... If not, then we're just gonna close up. Yeah, we're I mean, gonna wrap some, wrap it all up basically. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys have any more two cents? Like any final thoughts that you guys have, just to beginners in general, like or anyone just wanting to get into the community. Just come take class. Just do it. Mm-hmm. Like if I can't tell you how many people, how many of my friends that don't normally dance, they're like, oh, it's too scary. Like I can't do that. Like you just gotta do it. Just come in, take class. Mm-hmm. It's a step-by-step thing, and at the end of the day, it's just about having fun, right? Why would you not want to go to something to have fun? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so just do it. Yeah. Um, I always tell my students that I'm the weirdest, goofiest person you'll meet. I'm the weirdest person in the room, so don't be afraid. Um, no, no question that you ask is going to be weird, too weird, or it's going to be too silly. Nothing, because I'm already here, and I'm already like being silly for you yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> so don't be afraid. Me like, too. <laughs> take, yeah, take those steps. Um, come. Just don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Um, and don't be afraid to ask questions. I know everyone has a question, but no one ever wants to ask. And no matter how much I even want to try to pry sometimes, and I will, um, if you have any questions, um, people don't. I mean, um, if there's something that you're lost about, we expect a lot of questions because it, oh, yeah. it's, it, it's a class. lot of people, it, it's your first class. We teach Urban One classes. Um, people that want to get into it because they haven't, or people that want to get into it because they haven't in a while. You know, mm-hmm. they used to do it before. Um, ask those questions. Don't be afraid. If you can't figure it out, let me know. If you need something drilled, ask me. That's a question. Can we drill this? Mm-hmm. Um, I just said that to a person the other night. Like, ask me if, if you want it drilled, I'll drill it for you. If you want to reiterate, I'll reiterate, or I'll say it um, in another way. So, yeah, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be vocal, and uh, don't be afraid to have fun. I really like the one where it's like, we expect questions. Mm-hmm. Like, it's true. Mm-hmm. We, we do expect yeah. questions. So whenever you ask a question, we're not going to be like, oh, why'd you ask that? We, <laughs> we know there's going to be questions. Yeah. And we'd rather you just ask them. Definitely. Yeah. Because it helps us as a teacher, too. Because mm-hmm. obviously we know our dance, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but we know our dance. And we know, we know what feels comfortable. We know what feels good on us. But we don't necessarily know yeah. for you guys. And mm-hmm. maybe we're teaching it not as well as we should be. Exactly. So ask us questions. Yep. Ask mm-hmm. us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what about people getting to the community? Yeah, I mean, if, like, <laughs> how do I word this? So the why and just, like, what reason that you come to the first class, um, that is potentially going to open you up to a whole culture and a whole community and stuff. So um, if you are interested or if you are curious about it, definitely ask questions about that as well. Um, Because I think dance is more than just movement. It's more than just class. It's more than just performing. It's this entire culture, pretty much. And so like, there's always going to be more for you to discover with dance and stuff. So never think that Urban One is like... um, all that you're gonna get from it, and it, it it really is just the starting point. So yeah, just definitely open yourself up and dive in. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I think you guys said such meaningful things. Um, if I have anything to add, it would just be piggybacking on all three <laughs> of your points. Um, but I, for, you know, I want to thank you guys for being so um, open and basically sincere with your tips and tricks. Like you know as mentors um we appreciate that from you guys um so we're about to we're gonna close this up um episode four Four. of between us foods i want to thank richard raymond and of course kevin here and once again my name is donita thank you for talking with us between us foods hey later